Right, we're in the market centre and we've got three comedians here. <laughs> and they're going to tell us what the Royal British Legion is all about and what they're doing in the market today. Yeah, so, um, so what we're doing today then is just really just making sure that letting the crew people know that we are here and we're here for any of the veterans, any of the people that are serving, uh, also uh, for their dependent families as well. If, you, if they're struggling with anything or anything like that, you can always get hold of us, all right, and, uh, and we can then point you in the right direction and give you any help uh, if need to as well. So if, you, if you're not here, how do they get in touch? Right, so what we do is got a, got a website that you can, can get hold of, so just put in for the actual uh, crew British Legion, all right, and then um, and they can go on there and get in touch through, uh, through that way. But also as well, just to also point you towards another thing that we've got as well, veterans, right, is the Armed Forces uh, Breakfast Club, which you see Ian is, uh, is one of the, uh, the members to that as well, one of the main people, so I'll give you Ian and I'll have a quick chat about that. How do you do? Uh, Very well sometimes. <laughs> the Armed Forces Veterans Breakfast Club was forming to nearly five years ago. We've grown from five people to over 200 people now. All veterans and their families. And we meet every week, every Saturday at the uh, Four Eagles in between 10 and 12. Now, this is a good meeting point for veterans to mix with other veterans who are like-minded in their view of life. And in fact, we've been re reunited with some of the veterans that haven't seen them for some of the years. And it's a growing thing, and we've tried to work very closely with the British Legion because they support veterans the same as we do. The slogan is stronger together. Well, the library is now down to 50% apart from one little corner here where the scaffolding is so they're just taking the scaffolding down and then they can whack this bit down there's a little bit there just to finish the bottom few feet but then by the end of the day probably down to 50% that's all are that bad in crew now that people are getting boats to go across them I mean, just by Christ Church and looking that there's a this memorial and I'm zooming in a big way so it's hard to keep it steady but I've got this big memorial <laughs> memorial that people can't see because it's all boarded off so here's an idea we've got a lovely area here Lots of garden, quite historic. Why the hell isn't this open and have some nice flowers? It'd be a lovely flower display because you've got raised beds there. Can't quite see from here. Raised beds there, raised beds over there. War Memorial, but nobody can pay the respects to. And the whole building. It was supposed to be. Uh, Technology, technology centre but you've got the uh, things you've probably never seen but I can zoom in with the camera the old church bell's still there I don't suppose it rings cross there and it could open up to be such a lovely area and it's in the centre of town so it'd be nice to come and sit there's a seat there and there's something behind it. Uh, I'm assuming it's another memorial where it's very hard. I'm zooming in like 80 times, so. There's quite a few memorial plaques. Well, this is certainly, I presume it's still owned by the church, but uh, there's no reason why it couldn't be this lovely park area in the middle of crew. So you can have, sit and have your lunch here. 
And in the church grounds you've got all these memorials of people that lost their lives from crew. I mean, they must be able to do something with the area. I mean, it's not a million pounds to make it into a flower bed and a nice place for the public, is it? So quite what happened to it being a technology centre, we never found out. But, uh, it's not really his area, but perhaps we can get our uh, friend Roger Morris to make a suggestion about the gardens I mean he's, he's West End but uh, he's always keen to get things done well, we're at the steampunk on uh, by the square that's how you can hear me anyway We do have the stalls if you can hear me. The lady with the funny hat. <laughs> What's on today? Hello, good morning, welcome to the Steampunk Patrick here in crew on LY2. A big fun day plan here in the town centre of crew. That's it, you can hear we've got the big screen and I'm just displaying a picture. It seemed determined to make everybody deaf. <laughs> I've got a funny bike in the market hall. Mind your head on the wafters there, sir. Mind your head on the wafters. Well, in the market hall, we've got another big show about Ada. Idea. And you can actually have a selfie, you can go and stand behind that sticky red through. So they're really here uh, trying to sell this aid thing. There was another council cock-up. You may remember they did a survey about West Street making it into a B road. Now it's gone through sneakily and nobody sort of really noticed. But the thing is, there's less, less traffic now. But because there's less traffic, it's now become a bloody race course. As you can see, there's virtually nobody on the street, so instead of doing 30, 
You know, you can bloody belt along here like nothing on earth. So they've had the opposite effect of what they wanted. They are going to put calming meshes in eventually, but in the meantime, it's a racetrack. Well, weekly has to wheel. <laughs> getting ridiculous in it. I did check back and this started in January repairing it and it's now friggin April and again they haven't turned up so obviously no, nothing ever gets done if they don't turn up it does it I mean in the old days a decent brick is about it up in a day wouldn't they let's see if we can see how the uh, Post office is coming on, that's due to open anytime soon. There's plenty of people working in there, signs of life, so soon we'll have a post office. Well, next group viewers will remember that they put this new road in by the Lyceum in September. In October, they came and repaired it. In November, they came and repaired it, and now they're here repairing it again. The only thing going for it is we've actually got the screen on for one. It's not doing much, but it is on. Now somebody can perhaps explain why the market hall, it's a Monday morning, and it's closed. I say closed, all the doors are shut apart from the ones at the top. There's about two people in all these businesses are closed. So if you're running a business, you kind of make no money Monday, Tuesday. And Monday used to be a big day, didn't it? There was the market on, but not anymore. It doesn't seem to make any sense that you can't open on a Monday and a Tuesday. Well, we're almost 50%. We've got Big Bertha out this morning, but a lot of what they're having to do is to uh, let's see if he's going to get this one. This big piece of concrete, he's got to break that up. So it'll go on to a lorry. So that's taken a lot of the, a lot of the time because obviously you can't stick that in the back of a lorry. So you you got to break it up and try and get the uh, metal out of it. Just basically chewing through it. It's just unbelievable. We've said time and time. Again, the amount of bloody steel in all this is bloody unbelievable. See how that bites through it and turns it into bloody dust. So that's really what's taking the time. Well, it's a bit different, isn't it? <clears throat> These new entry signs have got solar panels. <laughs> one there and there's one there. <clears throat> Just for one light. Different. Just looking at all the flowers though, it's uh, opposite the uh, car park. Some springs definitely here, isn't it? We've got some uh, nice displays. At long last, you've seen a bit of sense and opened up this bloody path so you no longer have to go on the road. We previously said it was going to be like it till May, but they have now opened it. it probably took 27 people with uh, high vis on to work that out. Underwood Lane and talk about potholes. This is a really, really deep one just by the uh, allotments opposite 164. Well, you have to laugh, don't you? Big grand opening for the Tabby Docks play area. I officially opened it when it opened about three months ago, but now they're having the official opening. Yeah, so the new post office is now officially open and we've got other things as well, happy birthday things, things for the children, nail clippers, 
and we've got all the staff hiding because there's a man with a camera. <laughs> You've never seen staff clear so quick in your life. <laughs> Which is now officially opening all your needs, stationery, etc. The old substation now on the uh, Argos old car park has now got a hat on. The old Grand Lyceum is still closed. And as you can see, it's still got puddles. Puddles everywhere. And that's on a new road. So what hope have we got? Anybody know how to make roads? Just we should love to hear from you. The library on the front, we've got the outer bricks out, so it must be double bricked. So now making progress on the front as well. On the side you can now see daylight, so they've got the side bit down and down to the sort of rafters. Well the island's now 50% down. We've got this end bit down now. We've got a big pile of uh, rubble. So we're 50% of the way there. 